There's nothing to writing. All you do is sit down at a typewriter and bleed. Welcome to The Bleeders, a podcast and support group about book writing and publishing. I'm writer and podcaster Courtney Kosak, and each week I'll bring you new conversations with authors, agents, and publishers about how to write and sell books. So Bleeders Summer School is now in session and I'm doing something a little different. I'm trying to write a freaking book and (laughs) I've discovered that's very hard to do while producing three podcasts. So I had already batched a bunch of interviews for you guys. I was very excited to release them and that's what I'm gonna do. I did it all in advance. It's all ready for you. So long story short, this is how it's gonna go down. I am going to serve you up a mini-sode every Monday. Okay, let's call it a flash podcast in literary terms. And it's going to offer a delicious sample or a key lesson from the full conversation. It's going to be shorter. Okay, and then the full interview is over on the newly launched YouTube channel for the Bleeders which is really cute. It's really fun to watch everybody. So I think you'll enjoy that. And yes, I am going on 40 and I am launching a YouTube channel. (laughs) There's no shame in my game. The handle on YouTube is at Bleeders Podcast. You have to use the at sign. It's stupid, but it's how it works. So again, youtube.com slash at bleeders podcast and make sure you subscribe over there so that you can stay up on the latest and without further ado our instructor for today is hi my name is victoria killen and i'm a norwegian writer and i'm the author of my men it's been translated but you speak english so i'm very curious about was that weird for you to give up that control to someone else? And did you get a say in who was going to do the translation? How does that work? Uh, yeah, it, for the yeah, to answer your first question, yeah, it was. It's really strange and really a weird experience. Yeah, experience. Everything that has happened the last two years is really strange. Uh, <laughs> because now it's been like it's going to be translated into fourteen different languages. So, so for me, who's been just writing for the same hundred people. Uh huh. <laughs> this is like, yeah, yeah quite a steep hill. So what inspired, like when it was published in Norway, was it like insanely popular? How did people find it and discover it for these translations? Um, I think I had like a really good, like post COVID wind uh-huh. <laughs> with me. So when I, when the book was published, it was no other books were coming out sort of. Yeah. Roughly said. And, and my book came out in June. So the different newspapers and magazines were, and they like, they didn't have anything to write about. So they picked up my book quite fast and then there it came a lot of reviews. And that has sort of been like the main, like, how do you uh, say it? Uh, The muscles that could could Uh make this book travel. Yeah. And then I got an agent because my publishing house is so small. So I I was contacted by an independent uh, agent, a literary agent. And uh, she was the one uh, who was sort of like, okay, this book will travel. This is a good book. We need to get it out in the world. So she has, is the one who has done the job. And uh, as for the translation into English, we first like did a sample, a uh, translation sample from one translator. And that didn't work because there was some of the sort of, I don't know, the rhythm or the poetry or the, uh-huh. the tactility in the language didn't like sit at the first uh, the sample. So we ch- changed the translator and then we got, Damien Soros, who is, has translated it into English now. And he sort of like took the rhythm r- right away. And he has been translating a Norwegian poet called Jun Fosse. So he has like uh, the rhythm of poetry within him. So that, mm-hmm. I think that's a quite big deal for all my books, actually. You need to sort of think as a poet, not as a novelist, sort of need Uh to have like the metaphors and the rhythm and the yeah i sort of for me as myself i connect more to the poetry the world of poetry than i do to like normal prose sort of Uh i think it's more interesting to be in the world of yeah i can definitely see that in the in the book so and i was curious if 
Because I imagine it would be incredibly hard to let someone else take over the the driving your baby, basically. Like, <laughs> would you, because you don't know 14 languages, like no. <laughs> you have to just trust, right? For some of them, you have to just be like, well, I guess if they picked this person, it's going to be fine. It has to be. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a game of trust, uh, <laughs> and it's hard for me. I, I can read the Danish and the Swedish, uh, so that has been like a, a nice experience because I also read a lot of Danish and Swedish um, literature. And um, for myself, like for me, private, I had have this sort of like fetishizing uh, relationship towards Sweden. So, so yeah, so <laughs> I've been quite working quite close with the translator in Swedish but yeah it's really hard it's hard and I I'm I'm I was in Paris and in Brussels uh, last month with the book and yeah it is it is quite hard not getting if the people or the translator actually has like made it or yeah. being as precise as I want to or being like as um verbal or yeah because i've understood that when i was working with the translators that my language in the book is quite it's more of like a spoken word than a written word and it's more of like how you would talk norwegian uh, rather than write norwegian some some places it's probably more dialectical and i don't know how the translator even can even try to get that into another language with the connotations and actually like I don't know how. Yeah, it's magic to me that they can do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 On one hand, it's like amazing. You know, it's like, yes, my book is going to all these different places. And then on the other hand, there's like this like filter on. Yeah. Yeah. Work. And sort of. Yeah. And you sort of, I sort of, uh, my agent actually told me that so, the translator themselves often see themselves as artists. And I kind of get that because they are sort of writing. A new book yeah. they are they are making a new artwork <laughs> they have to take some decisions which will make this another book mm -hmm. and i and that is like they, yeah they are artists in some some way and i have to trust that yeah yeah, yeah. totally all right bleeders that was just a little preview the whole interview is so good and it's over on youtube so again you go to youtube.com slash at bleeders podcast that is youtube.com slash at bleeders podcast for the full conversation you're gonna love it Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Bleeders. Oh, writing is so much better with friends. I'm your host, Courtney Kosak, and hey, let's connect on social media. I am at Courtney Kosak, that is K-O-C-A-K, -K, on Twitter and Instagram. And you can follow the show on the new show accounts, at Bleeders Podcast, on Twitter and Instagram. And make sure you're signed up for the Bleeders Companion Substack. The link is in the episode description for that. And if you could do me a huge solid and leave a five-star rating and review, I have a goal for the summer to get to 50 ratings on both Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as of this recording, I am at seven and 20 respectively. And you can totally help me out by leaving a five-star rating and a review if it's possible. On Spotify, you just go to the upper left-hand corner of the Bleeders page, you click the star button, and you click all five stars, and it really helps elevate the level of guests that we can get. So I'm hoping in the fall we can just, like, next level the guest booking, and I feel like we've already had such amazing people on the show. So please, leave a rating and review. I would be eternally grateful. And join me again next week for another all-new episode. In the meantime... Happy bleeding! Ah!